Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and we're going to have a good time making a decorative barber strop. This is a great project for a bunch of reasons. First off, unlimited creative possibilities. We'll talk about that. But secondly, if you're new to leather, it's a relatively simple project, but we're going to pick up some great tricks and techniques. Last, and my favorite, what a great gift idea. Here's why. In our bathroom at home, we've always got these little pieces and parts of walls, say between the linen closet, medicine cabinet, or shower. Nothing fits in there. What a classic piece of leather work and the perfect place for it. All right, anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there, gonna take you straight to our website. Also, if you wanna know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. Okay, let's step over, start on a pattern. We've got a simple pattern here. In fact, it's just three pieces. But the biggest point, it's your project, your call. Make this your own. We're just gonna go with some basic dimensions to get us started. So let's jump over to a digital pick. On our main body, 25 and a half long by two and five eighths inches wide. That's an odd width, we'll talk about that. We've got a taper on the other end, a three inch spread between our rivet holes that's going to accommodate our O-ring. On our bottom left, we have our upper overlay. On our bottom right, we have our bottom overlay. Okay, we'll explain this. So on our width, two and five eighths of an inch, we're gonna go with an eighth inch flat chisel. So therefore, that's going to give us exactly 10 chisel holes across. If we go with two inches, that cuts us a little bit short, or two and a half inches. That cuts us a little short. So we're gonna have one stitch that's either long or short. And as leather crafters, that's gonna, that's gonna make us crazy. To cut our bottom curve, you notice we've got a curve here. Now the straps are made to where we clip on one end and we can hold that on the other end, that curve. That's comfortable in our hand. So with our S18, we're gonna use our can and our glue. So for our bottom, bottom curve, there's our S18. So that makes an easy, an easy curve there. But also, we've got four pieces here. We've got our, our lower and our upper overlay. But right here, we're gonna drop in a cool little stamp pattern. So what I'd like, is so we've got an eighth of an inch from our edge to our groove line. Let's add another eighth of an inch from our, our groove or our chisel line to our design. That's gonna look very balanced. So all I've done here, so we've got a quarter of an inch from our edge end. I'm just gonna take this same pattern piece and I'm gonna drop one quarter of an inch all the way around, easy enough. That will be our inset piece, so we won't actually cut those. One more point, right here. We're gonna go with a decorative barber strop, something beautiful for our home. But if we need a good strop for our shop, easily done, we can drop an O-ring on either end, so it's easy to hold. We can put that on a nail on our workbench and strop from there, or easy enough just flat on our work table. You can see, yeah, I've used this one quite a bit, but we can go either way, but let's really dress this up. Okay, let's step over to our main table. We're gonna cut some leather. We're gonna go with two weights of leather for our barber strop. Basically the two weights that I always have in my shop, a four to five ounce for our overlays and an eight to nine ounce for our body. That's gonna give us a very quality feel. But again, your project, your call, go with any weight you want to. Now, on our four to five, this is our Weaver Select. I'm going this route specifically because we're going to stamp and it's gonna be beautiful. So let's lay these in. There we go, I've got a good straight edge right across my top. There we go, I wanna come in a little bit from that edge. I notice I have the leftovers of a cut there, so I don't wanna hit that. So let's scribe and cut these out. Two good cuts there, very nice. Those are ready to go. Let's set those aside. So our second piece of leather for our main body, we're gonna go with our double shoulders. Beautiful leather, but also, it's a great cut for belt makers because we've got some good length and width here. So let's lay this out. Let's scribe in our main body. Good, we're marked. While we're here, let's go ahead and drop in our rivet holes. Now, we're going to cut a taper on this. So let's take these lines and just cut straight off the end 
Then we'll come back and cut our taper. Okay, our main body looks good. I'm going to roll this piece of leather up. Let's cut for our taper. But right here, notice, I've got a line right here, four inches in from our end. Now we want to mark this on both sides of our strap, but we need these as parallel as we can make them. Perfectly parallel across there. Okay, so we've got our mark. Let's take our straight edge and I'm going to cut from that mark out. Okay, let's step over to our punch table, punch out our taper. We're going to cut a pretty good sized taper here. We're coming down from two and five eighths all the way down to one inch. So I'm going to use a one and a half inch English point. Now we're going with a one and a half simply because this is a common tool, standard belt width. So therefore, most likely we have this in our shop. If we don't, we can always cut our taper, but this makes it very easy, very clean. So what we're going to do, let's spread that out so we can see the very end of our cut. I'm going to drop the edge of the tool right at the top of that cut, and I'm going to drop the very center of that punch right on my edge. So therefore, that drops into my pattern mark or my scribe line perfectly. There we go. How clean and easy is that? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, that looks good thus far. Now we're going to add a one inch round end punch. We don't have to go this route, but it's always a nice touch. Good. And last, our round holes. We're simply going to use rivets, double cap rivets. So I'm going to use a one eighth inch round hole. Well, very good. That looks very professional. Just what we want. Let's head back to our main table. We're going to lay in our overlays. Notice we've got a point here that's going to point right to our, our rivet. And on this end, we're going to drop in our rounded end. So therefore, that's going to sit just like that. Let's go ahead and trace these in because we're going to use a contact cement to glue these together and we need to know where to stop that glue. Good. Okay. Now, we're going to groove this and I love a groover. We're not actually going to sew the main body. We will sew our overlays. But notice the groove line here. It gives our edge a very finished look. So I love to use this even when I'm not sewing. Now, technically, we don't need to groove under our overlays. So let's just run just from the inside to the inside on both sides, and then we'll groove our end. Well, good. That looks good. Now, notice here, too, I did not groove around my end. I can, but if we're a little uncomfortable with that, no groove looks far better than a bad groove. Now, on our edger, we've got an eight to nine ounce here, so we're going to go with a number two. On our face, again, we're just going to groove outside of our overlays, but let's be a little more accurate. Let's start right on that line and then come off right on that line. Good. That looks nice. Basically, why we're doing that is we're going to bevel or, or we're going to edge on the outside of here. So if we edge both sides here, both sides here, when we put this together, we'll have two rounded edges. The way we're going to do it, bevel outside, bevel outside. Now we'll have a clean meat on our leather and it'll be a nice edge. On our back, let's bevel all the way around. Okay, that looks good. Our body basically ready to die. So let's take our two overlays, jump over to our punch table. We're going to add in our stamp design. Like I mentioned, we're going to use our Weaver Select for the parts that we're going to stamp because to me, that's one of the two best leathers for stamping and tooling ever. So with this, two ways we can go about wetting our leather. First off, we can take a simple sponge, and I love these. This is our dressing sponge, but I like to cut them down. Great for adding dye and water. So, we can simply wet our leather, get it a nice chestnut color, give it about 15 minutes, and then we can stamp. 
But what I would prefer to do, let's case this leather since we're using a high quality leather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak this in some water. Let's give that just, I would say maybe eight, 10 seconds. This is a thinner leather, so it's going to absorb water pretty quickly. So let's draw that piece out. Do the same with the second. Okay. Let's give those about 45 minutes. Let's let them air dry. Some of that water is going to evaporate out and some's going to wick in. Then we'll cover this and actually case it. Our leathers had about 40, maybe 45 minutes. Now a couple points. First off, notice it's starting to return to its natural color. It's still a little bit dark, but I can feel this. There's not excessive moisture in there. It's not dripping wet, but also, it's back to a little body. It's not flimsy like it was when it came out of the water. Now, one additional point. Some folks will put just a little dab of, say, dish soap in their water. That's going to break the surface tension, allow that water to wick in deeper, faster. But this is just what we want. So let's take some of our pattern sheeting. Now, in the old days, a piece of leather would be wet and it would be put in a case for 24 hours. We've got a thinner weight here, so we're going to go about eight hours. But let's lay our plastic sheeting over that. Then we're going to drop our cutting board over that. There we go. Let's leave that for about eight hours. I've basically given this overnight. So let's open this up. Now, for those of us with little to no patience, me being one of these, we're going to have to do a little planning up front on our projects. But if we do, it's going to be well worth it. So now, one more step. Let's give this about 45 minutes. Let it dry just a little bit more. Then let's add our stamp pattern. Our leather is cased and ready to go. Now that's a big process for two small stamped pieces. We can wet and stamp and we'll look at that. The bigger point here is that if we really want to take our stamping and our tooling to the next level, casing, the best way to go. Okay, secondly, this is just a small test piece. Now the reason I mentioned that just a second ago, this is simply wet, given about 15 minutes and we can stamp. We're getting pretty good detail on those stamps. But what we're going to do is use a combination of stamps. So let's play with these on a test piece, see what looks best. We're going to go with this route. We're going to use three tools here, but we're going to leave that open. Entirely up to you what you want to drop in there. We can drop in an initial, a name, initials, maybe our company logo, some kind of a stamp, all kinds of ways we can go with that. But let's give that a cool border. All right, first step. Let's take our overlay inset. What I want to do is lay that in as best as I can. There we go. Now we can measure this out, absolutely. But it's pretty easy to see that we have a good placement there. So with our all, let's lightly trace in. Good, there we go. Camera's probably not going to see that, but I am. But also, We've got a small spot there. That is going to make me nuts. All right. Anyway, let's do the other the same way. Okay. We've got a visible line. Easy enough to follow. So let's start right here. We're going to take a continuous mule foot. Now, this is a little bit of a longer tool. We've got a four to five here. So I don't want to hit this very hard. But also, I need to work it out a little bit. One thing I like about this, this tool is notice the length of it. It kind of works itself out of just the border design. So I'm going to drop that right in the corner of my scribe line. There we go. Let's work that a little bit. I'm going to do the same for the other corners. Okay. Well, yay, that looks good thus far. Okay, on our veiner, on our sides, let's look at our road map. So on our sides, we're just going to split the difference between our mule foot. There we go. Good. Notice, too, our leather, because we cased it, it's taking every detail in the stamp head. Good. Now, again, right here, we're going to have to butt our veiner right up to the mule foot on both sides to give us room for our camo tool. Same across the bottom. Okay, good so far. Last tool, let's use a camouflage tool. And I'm going to drop this right in between both. If 
very cool. Nice design, simple combination of stamps. I'm going to do the same thing to the other piece. When we go to the trouble to case our leather, world of difference in the outcome. Now, this last step, we don't have to do this, but to me, I want a nice clean box around my design because for the most part, we'll have our border, our stitch line, and our edge. Going to be very, very consistent. So let's do this. Let's drop a straight edge right on our scribe line, and let's take our swivel. Now, I should change my camera shots for this, but I'm going to try my best right here. So let's just drop in a light swivel line just enough to give us a border. Yeah, there we go. That's going to separate that out. It's going to look good. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other three sides here, five sides here. And let's make sure we've got a good meat in our corners. Okay. Now I saved this piece. I can always swivel freehand, but if you're not comfortable with that, we can always drop in our pattern and simply use that as our straight edge. Because like I said, I, I need to change my camera shot, but for this simple line, I hate to do that. So let's just use our pattern and I'm gonna put my, try to hold my knife to where we can see that. And again, we're just dropping in a very light line there. Now let's come in, square off our corners. Well, good. So to me, that gives us a good, solid border on our design. Now, we're going to have to let these dry a little bit longer, but again, maybe four, five hours. Then we'll jump over, start doing some edge work and dyeing. Good dry time, and those look good. Very nice. A simple stamp design goes so far. Let's step back to our main table. We're going to bevel, groove these, then let's dye our project. Let's bevel and groove front side only. So on our groover, again, I've got this set at one eighth of an inch. So let's groove all the way around both pieces. Okay, groove line is in. Let's bevel, again, front side only, but we're gonna use a number one now since we're going with a four to five ounce. Okay, those look good. So, we would jump to dying, and we can, but what I'd prefer to do, I'd like to drop in my chisel line on this, because once we get this on top of our eight to nine, we're talking about maybe a 14, 15 ounce leather. I feel like I'll have more control going through this. Then when we glue these on, chisel on our main body, it's gonna be a lot easier to get that chisel through, out, and it's gonna be more consistent. So let's jump back over to our punch table, drop in our chisel holes. When we were talking about our pattern, we mentioned that two and five eighths of an inch is a little bit of an odd width. Well, the reason is our chisel is gonna fit in perfectly. All we're looking for here is consistency in our stitch line. So let's start right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my single tine. This is our eighth inch flat chisel. So I'm gonna drop that right in the corner. In fact, let's just make a mark there. Notice how I'm straddling the corner there. So I'm gonna do that on all four corners and our tip. Okay, now once we come back, once we glue this on, dye it, glue it on, we're gonna have to re-chisel this, but it's gonna be much easier now because we're already through one ply of our leather. So, let's take our four. Now, what I'm going to do, first time, last hole, but let's just press that in a little bit. There we go, now I can see exactly where that needs to land. Good, and that last chisel is gonna sit right there. There we go, so we've got a consistent distance between our stitch holes. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, good thus far. Now let's do the same thing across the top. We can always go with our six because we're on a four to five here, so it's not really gonna be that difficult to get that back out. First time, last hole. Perfect, that leaves just enough room for our two time. 
Okay, that's what we want, it's consistency. So I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Yay, there we go. Okay, well that looks good. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. One tie in each corner and fill in between. There we go. Very consistent. But again, like I said, I kind of feel like I have more control. I'm not trying to get through so much leather. So now we're ready to die. Let's step back to our main table. If you're new to leather craft, big point here, dyeing our leather does not have to be messy, expensive, or time consuming. We're going to go two routes. We're going to dip dye our main body only because we're using the pro dye. It's the only dye I use cures all of our ills. So for our main body, we're gonna go with a saddle tan, get that a nice light color. For our overlays, we're gonna go with a walnut. That's gonna give us a nice contrast. Now, to set up, I've got a cheap plastic trash bag here. That's gonna protect my work surface. But if we dye on this, it becomes a mess. The dye pools, it gets slick. Let's drop some cheap paper. In fact, I think this is just some wrapping paper. This will absorb the dye. So, inexpensive wire makes a great hook. Let's take our main body and I'm just gonna run this through a little bit slowly. Let that dye wick in. That's gonna be beautiful. Dip dyeing gives us a very consistent dye, but also notice how quick and easy this is. In fact, that dye is virtually dry before we can even get it on our table. But nonetheless, if we have a little dye sticking around, let's rub that off with a simple cotton rag. Okay, that's ready to go. I'm gonna lay that aside, give that maybe about four hours dry time. I'm gonna reset though. Let's go ahead and dye our walnut. We are set. Now, I'm gonna move this strap out of the way because I guarantee I'm gonna get a spot of my walnut on my saddle tan. But also another plus, this little hook. Now I can hang this just about anywhere, let it air dry out of my way. One last point, a simple paper towel and a funnel and clean up is quick and easy. So, with our walnut, it's kind of rare that we have a piece of a project that doesn't have a hole in it. Yeah, we've got chisel holes, but we're, we're gonna use a sponge. We can always go with the daubers, these are great. But the trick with a pro die is to get as much, of a, as much coverage as I can on my first pass. Then I'll come back with the second pass. So our, our sponges here are great. They really hold a good bit of dye in. There we go. Okay, let's give that one more pass. And you notice I'm going a little bit light here. Let's hit our edges. And for me, I tend to like to dye the back. So let's just drop some dye there. Now that'll be covered, but it's just good practice. Okay, so that's ready to go. Let's set that aside, do the same thing on this piece. Okay, those two pieces are ready to go. Let's give everything about four hours dry time, and then we will glue these on so we're getting close to assembly now. Plenty of time to dry. Look how consistent our dye is, and how easy was that? That's our pro dye working for us. So now we're gonna add a top coat. We're gonna use our leather bumps, one of my favorites, no ventilation required. It actually smells good. But what it's going to do, it's gonna give us a bit of a gloss, but it's going to enrich in our dye color, and this is gonna be gorgeous. Nice contrast in our colors there. So we're gonna bring those colors out a little bit. Now with our leather balm, almost the same as the Pro Dye. I'd like to get as much as I can on my first pass, but we need to go a little bit more sparingly with this. So I'm gonna get a good cotton rag, something that's going to absorb a good bit of my leather balm. Now what we don't want is bubbles. We could just run straight down. That's gonna streak terribly. We, we went to a lot of trouble. Actually, we didn't to get this clean and consistent. Well, let's don't reverse that with our balm. So let's start at one end and let's just work our way down. Very nice. Now let's maybe come back down, fill in some spots that we may have missed. And again, I really, I wanna try to avoid the streaking and the bubbles. Well, that looks good. Okay, let's give that a minute. I'm gonna add some leather balm to both, both of our overlays.
Good. Now, I'm going to take a dry rag, dry cotton rag. Let's buff this. Now, it always freaks me out a little bit because it's going to go very matte. But let's just give this, say, 15 seconds of buffing. Okay. Well, there we go. Now we've got some gloss. That looks good. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And our walnut, also beautiful. That's really one of my favorite pro dye colors. Okay, let's reset here. We're going to glue these on, then chisel. Typically, the rule of thumb is this. If we're going to tack to sew, let's just go with a white glue. And this is a great glue for leather. If we're going to tack for permanent, let's go with the contact cement. Well, we're going to cross that line because we're going to add a chisel. So we're going to be chiseling this. I want a good bond behind that. But also on my edges, I want those to come together so they look like one piece of leather. So let's go with our contact cement. Now we've got a top grain and a top coat. That is not going to accept our glue. So let's use a rougher. And this is a great rougher. It's smaller, very easy to use. But what I want to do here, right here we can see our line. Yeah, there we go. We don't have to get right to that edge. Let's get within an eighth of an inch because we're going to sew that. But out here, I want to go right to the edge. So again, our leather meets. But at the same time, I don't want to drag this off of my edge. That's going to give us some fuzz there. So all we need to do is rough the top grain. There we go. Let's rough it across there, maybe an eighth of an inch from the edge. Now, on our sides, let's get very close. But let's go parallel to our edges instead of off of our edge. Okay, that's going to give us a good surface that's going to accept our glue. But also, you notice we can drive this. If I lean a bit, a little bit left, it's going to circle left. A little bit right, same thing. So this is a great tool. So with our contact cement, we're going to drop this on. Again, I don't need to go right to my edge here. But out here, let's just do this. Let's run off the edge of our leather. There we go. But also, too, I would like to keep glue from hitting the edge, that's going to darken over there just a little bit. So let's just work our glue right off our edge on our three sides, and let's just get close to our line right there. Okay, well that looks good. There we go. I don't want any misses or holidays over there. So let's do the same thing to this right off the edge on all four sides. Well, that's easy enough. And also, let's make sure we get our corners. We don't want those to dog ear. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other end and the other overlay. And we've got glue on that end. We're going to give that a minute to dry, but let's jump down here. This is dry. So let's drop that in right to our line. And I can feel that on the edge of my leather. So let's drop that in, press that. In fact, we can flip that over press that. We've got a great roller, but just for these smaller pieces, hand pressure is more than enough. Well, that looks good. So I'm going to give the other end just about maybe two, three minutes, let that glue set, drop that on, then we'll chisel. Looking good thus far. Let's jump over to our punch table. We can always chisel this all at one time, but this cures a couple of problems. First off, getting a chisel through the leather, not really the issue. Getting it back out, that's the trick. We don't want to ream open our holes or trash our, our top leather or our overlay. So we could go with our six. We know exactly where that's going to land. That's a lot of steel moving through that leather. So let's back off to our one and our, two, and our two. It's going to take a little extra time, but all told, it's so much easier. So let's use our one in our corner right back out. Easy enough. Now let's drop our two in. There we go, and look how easy that comes back out. No issue. So I'm going to use my one in my corners and my two in between. Well, there we go. Okay, one end is done. Let's jump down to the other. Going to do exactly the same thing. Well, that is easy enough. Looks good. Let's jump to the other end of the table, do some easy sewing.
We've got a great video on hand sewing. It's going to have all the tricks and tips, so we're just going to touch on the high points here. So right off the bat, our trusty sewing pony. This makes hand sewing so very easy. It keeps our work comfortably in front of us. Secondly, our needles. These are the John James needles, the number 18. It's my favorite size. It's a smaller needle, so therefore it's going to slide through these holes. But also, being a hand sewing needle, no sharp point. That's a big help to us. On our thread, the Ritza 0.8 millimeter. Love this. But also notice, we've got some gorgeous colors here. We could more fine tune this to match whatever environment it's in. Say our bathroom, we could drop in a small stitch line in a different color that matches. That would be cool. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking here very shortly. But on our thread, I'm going to go for maybe four and a half times our length. The point here, I don't want to sew around, get back to my, to my end or my start. And I've got two little nubs that I'm going to try to tie a knot with. It's happened, but I want to avoid that. So we're going to go with a saddler stitch. First hole, one needle. Let's pull that through, equalize out our length there. All right. On our second hole, this is a little bit of a trick. I want to put my top grain to my prominent hand. Now I'm right handed, but we'll pretend I'm left because the hole on this side is funnel shaped. So therefore that needle literally falls into that hole. On the back side, it's going to pucker out so I can get that needle in there, open that hole up a little bit. That back needle slides right through. All right. Second trick. I can absolutely push on the needle, but it's a little scary because I'm worried this is going to go right up under my fingernail. Let's do this. Let's take our thread, pull down on the thread right there. I'm going to push with the thread through the hole as opposed to the needle. Notice keeps my thumb well out of the way of that point. Now, last thing. I'm going to take my hands from my thread and I'm going to put them up to the needle. So now I can simply pull that through and we've got a stitch. So once you get rolling, hand sewing's pretty fast. Let's crank that down to where we can see that stitch just sink down into that leather. And I'm going to sew all the way around back to our start point. That looks great, doesn't it? But also notice, because we put our angled chisel in the corners, we've got a good square corner on that. Our stitches are consistent. But now we've got a small problem. Typically, we can hide a knot. In most every project, we could separate these, these two, come in from the front and the back. That's going to be a headache. Secondly, we could always tie a square knot, which we've done before, and run our two tails through. Well, we see those tails out front. We can't trim them enough. So what we're going to do on this, let's go to our last hole. I'm going to come through from the front only. Let's draw that down. Now let's flip this around. We're just going to tie a small square knot. There we go. And I'm going to leave it here because first off, very few are going to look at the back of this. But if they do, they're going to get a surprise. They're going to notice that this is hand sewn. Okay, so simple square knot right over left. Let's draw that down and left over right, draw that down. Good. Now, one more point. Notice how the, where my thread bends, bends back in the needle. That's gotten darker. That's picked up some, some of the dye color. So again, having a longer leader, we're going to be able to cut that off. So we've got a good knot there. Let's just drop our knife in, pull our thread across the knife blade. There we go. Now we're going to hammer this down. So that'll virtually disappear. But in my opinion, that's the best way to go on this. But that looks good. All right, going to do the same thing to the other end. Well, that looks good. Let's see, there we go. Can we get the whole thing in our shot? Yeah, there we are. We'll get a little closer look. But all we have to do now, hammer down our stitch line, drop in a rivet. We're done with this beautiful project. When I say hammer down our stitch line, I really mean we're going to tap down our stitch line. It's going to do three things. Not necessary, but you'll see where I'm going with this. So first off, we're going to close our holes down a little bit. Secondly, we've got a groove. We've actually cut a groove. Primary job there is that our thread's going to sink down into that groove. It's going to reduce the risk of it snagging or catching. But the third point, it's going to spread that thread out just a little bit, make it a little bit more prominent. Now we can always use, uh, use a mallet. You can see where I strike my tools right here. So I'd like to use this part of my mallet. So therefore I'm not dinging my leather. But the best route to go 
is simply a tack hammer. Good. Now I'm not hitting this hard enough to ding my leather, but you'll notice big difference between the two sides. So I'm going to hammer down or tap down our bottom piece, our top piece. We're almost done. Okay, looks good. So last step, we're going to take a medium double cap or the 5 16 inch height. This is two 8 to 9s back to back. That's going to be just right. And we've got a one and a half inch O-ring, both in our antique nickel. So let's slide that on. We're going to come through the back. Now I can lay this on the edge of my marble. There we go. So my loop hangs off. Thus, I'm going to get a very, a very straight, very flat set on this. Well, there we go. See if we can get this in our shot. How nice is that? Yeah, there we are. Okay. How nice is that? That is a beautiful project. This is a great project for so many reasons. First off, unlimited creativity here. We could always drop in a tool design or a stamp design on the main body or color combinations. Secondly, what a great gift idea. Very unique. And the last, my favorite, for those of us who are new to leather craft, We've learned how to cut a pattern, drop in a taper, case our leather, stamp it, dye it, and hand sew it. What a great project. I hope you've had as much fun with this one as I have, and I hope every barber's drop you make is spot on beautiful. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.